Hello everyone! In this video, we shall take a look at two particular types of redox reactions known as disproportionation and comproportionation. Before we begin, I will encourage all of you to download the handout that accompanies this video so you can follow along. The link is in the description below. Let us begin. A very interesting type of redox reaction is known as disproportionation. This happens when a species is simultaneously reduced and oxidized at the same time to form two different products. One of which you might be familiar with is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Let us assign oxidation states to each of the elements first. In hydrogen peroxide, hydrogen is given an oxidation state of plus 1. Since it is a peroxide, the oxidation state of oxygen is minus 1. In water, hydrogen is plus 1 oxygen is minus 2, and in the element oxygen, the oxidation state of oxygen is 0. We realize that the oxidation state of hydrogen remains unchanged at plus 1. However, the oxidation state of oxygen decreases from minus 1 in hydrogen peroxide to minus 2 in water. This is a reduction reaction. At the same time, we realize that the oxidation state of oxygen also increases from minus 1 in hydrogen peroxide to 0 in oxygen. This is oxidation. We find that hydrogen peroxide is both oxidized and reduced at the same time. So this is what we call a disproportionation reaction. Now let's take some time to fill in the blanks. Now in this case, my question to you would be, what is the oxidizing agent and what is the reducing agent then? Well, the answer is that hydrogen peroxide acts as both the oxidizing agent and reducing agent. Interesting, right? Now I would like you to pause the video, then give examples 2 and 3 a try before I go through the answers with you. As usual, before we start, we always assign oxidation numbers first, if you need help assigning oxidation numbers, do revisit the other video on oxidation states. So here we have different oxidation numbers. Okay, if you take a closer look, the oxidation state for sodium, oxygen and hydrogen all do not change. So we focus on what happens to our chlorine. You realize that in this case, the oxidation state decreases and it increases over here. So chlorine is simultaneously reduced and oxidized at the same time. So this is a disproportionation reaction. Chlorine also acts as both the oxidizing and reducing agent. If you are familiar with the test for chlorine gas, you know that we need to use a moist blue limus paper, which will turn red and then bleached when chlorine is present. So this is actually the chemical reaction that happens when chlorine reacts with the water in your moist blue litmus paper. The substance over here, hypochlorous acid, is what causes the bleaching of the litmus paper and hydrochloric acid is what causes the blue litmus paper to turn red. Let us fill in the oxidation states again and we find that the oxidation state of chlorine increases and decreases at the same time. Alright, so these are the examples of disproportionation reactions. Let us move on to the next type. Another unique type of redox reactions is known as comproportionation. In such a reaction, we have two reactants, both containing the same element, but they have a different oxidation number. And then they form the same product with the oxidation number that is in between that of the two reactants. I think it's easier to illustrate this idea using an example. So we look at example number four. Again, we start by assigning oxidation numbers to all the elements. For iodate, this is plus 5. Iodide ion, minus 1. And iodine, 0. I left out oxygen and hydrogen because the oxidation states do not change in this reaction. So going from plus 5 to 0, the oxidation state of iodine decreases. This is a reduction reaction. Going from minus 1 to 0, iodide ions are being oxidized. What we see here is that these two reactants form the same product in which the oxidation state 0 
is in between that of plus 5 and minus 1. So this is comproportionation. Let's fill in the blanks below. Iodide ions cause iodate to be reduced. So iodide is the reducing agent and iodate is the oxidizing agent. Now pause the video and try the other two examples before I go through them with you. Okay, so that's all we have for today. Thanks for watching.